we're turning to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, please. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Also, just before, as you're turning over, I want to announce that next Friday night, the 13th, as part of, of the CEF Week of Prayer, uh, the Mauritius team uh, will be uh, sharing about their trip in Seaview, and that's this Friday night at 8 p.m. All right, 1 Corinthians, please, chapter 10, and we're going to just read two verses. I want you to come with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 12. The Apostle Paul writes and he says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. I'm sure we've all done it. And I'm just as guilty as the next man. I'm sure we've all done it. It's so easy to do it. And yet it's so wrong to do it. And a brother prayed this in a prayer meeting this morning, and he had no idea what was on my note. And it's so wrong to do this. And yet it's so easy. And child of God, it's so wrong to judge another brother or another sister who has fallen in sin. It's wrong. It's so easy, child of God, to judge another brother or another sister who has fallen into sin. And it's so, so, so wrong when some Christians delight in judging some other Christians who have fallen. It's so wrong child of God, when we judge a brother or when we judge a sister who has fallen into sin, it's so wrong. Any person that judges a brother, any person that judges a sister who has fallen into sin, they don't know their Bible. Any brother or sister who judges a fellow believer who has fallen in their sin haven't really listened to the words of Christ. Do you know what Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 1 to 3? This is what the Lord Jesus says. He says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge ye shall be judged, and with what manner of measure ye meet, the same shall be measured to you again. And in verse 3 he says, Why beholdest thou the moat in thy brother's eye, considering not the beam that is thine own eye? Listen, brother, this morning. Listen, sister, this morning. Listen to what God wants to teach you. It's wrong to judge another brother, and it's wrong to judge a sister who has fallen into sin. I remember one time hearing about we said Murray. We said Murray got saved. We rascally was. 
And after he got saved, he went to a local gospel hall where he could go and join and get fellowship and learn about God's Word. One of the men out of the gospel hall, they were walking the dog one night, and they noticed we said money coming out of a back gate that led up to the public house, up to the pub. He noticed this two Friday nights, and he went to the elders of the assembly and says, listen, we Murray, he's only a fraud. He's only a fraud. He's at the drink. He's at the drink again. I've caught him. I've caught him out. And the two elders, they went, and they watched, and they snuck, and they watched for we said Murray. Without fail, we said Murray were seen going in through the back gate, sneaking up the back gate into the back of the pub and coming back out again. And they watched him for four weeks. And the call said Murray into the assembly and had a meeting down and told him that we have to dispel you from the assembly because you're not an only hypocrite. Said Murray said, let me explain to you men as to why I was going into that pub. I run up a slate the length of your arm and it's my duty as a Christian, regardless of whether it's a public house, if I owe that man money, I'm going to pay it back. The two men say, the two elders says, away of that with you. But you know the problem? Within 18 months, those two elders were caught in the midst of a whole fraud scandal. It's wrong to judge, believe you me. And it's dangerous to judge. We Sammy Workman, when he was in Abbot's Cross, used to tell the story about this wee man. He's a wee upstart. Oh, you get an upstart every road. And every Sunday morning, he would say, Mr. Workman, you see that person? Mr. Workman, you see that one? Do you see this one? Do you see that one? Mr. Workman stopped him one day and says, listen, do you see that one there? Do you see that one? Do you see that one? Every time you point your finger, you're bringing judgment upon yourself three times over. It's dangerous to judge, child of God. Believe you me, it's dangerous to judge. This is what we've got to do. Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if our brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. What does he say? Judge them. No, he says, you're to restore them. You're to restore them. You're not to judge them. You're to restore them. And then he goes on to say this tonight. He says, such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You're not allowed to judge. Billy Graham says there's three things you don't know concerning a person who's fallen into sin. You don't know how hard they tried not to sin. You don't know how much they wrestled and struggled. Secondly, he says, you do not know the powers of the forces that assailed them. We forget that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And another thing Billy Graham says you don't know. You don't know what you'd have done yourself if you were in the same situation. It's wrong to judge another believer when they've fallen into sin. That's why Paul said in verse number 12, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. My text this morning is 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. And God wants to, through this text, bring to your heart as much as he brings to my heart truths concerning temptation. And listen, child of God, we all face temptation, and nobody faces it more so than me. Nobody faces temptation more than me. There's a whole lot of people today, friend, and they think they're spiritually perfect. Well, them who think they're spiritually perfect and spiritually prayed, oh, I'll tell you, they're the vulnerable ones, believe you me. Notice what that text says. You know what the first truth you'll see in that verse concerning temptation? You'll see the common truth in that verse concerning 
temptation. Look what it says, the common truth. This is what it says. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Now listen, child of God. It doesn't matter who you are or who I am, and it doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are or who I think I am. Listen, never you get it into your head, and never you allow yourself to think that you cannot be tempted. If the truth be told, it would shock each other, you and I would shock each other, in the many different ways that temptation comes to us. Don't you ever let yourself think or believe you'll never be tempted. There's not one of us in this meeting this morning, let me tell you, has an unblotted sheet. The devil comes to us all. And the devil comes to us in 101 different ways. Ah, but here's the thing, friend. The devil comes. Ah, yes, but God allows him to come. God doesn't stop him coming. God didn't stop the devil coming to the Lord Jesus when he fasted in the wilderness. God didn't stop uh, the devil coming, friend, and tempting Samson. And he didn't come to, when, when he tempted everybody else. God didn't stop him. Sometimes the God allows the devil to come and tempt us in order to test us. The temptations we face this morning, child of God, no matter what they are, they are coming to all, common to all. John MacArthur had a friend who started to work for this very wealthy company. He wasn't in it for a week. And he was left in the office on his own, and there was a big wad of money sitting on his desk. John MacArthur said his friend lifted the money, put it in his briefcase, and took it home without anybody seeing him. And as he took it home, he says, first thing in the morning, I have to get this to the boss. The next morning, he went into the boss's office and says, listen, sir, I don't know whose this is. He says, but I took it home last night for safekeeping because I'm afraid whoever has lost this has spent the whole night worrying about it. The boss turned round to MacArthur's friend and says, good man, he says, I put it there to test you. You've passed. But child of God, here's where the problem lies, is when you start to entertain the test. John MacArthur's friend had him home that night and started counting the money and started looking at it and started counting it all out, friends. All of a sudden, then the temptation would come. He'll start to think, oh, but sure, nobody will miss a dollar or two. Now think of what I could do with this money. Listen, child of God. Temptation's common for all of us, and don't you tell me it's not. James 1, verse 13 to 15 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own lust, enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and bringeth and sin bringeth forth death. And now listen, child of God, listen to me now, are you listening? Many a good man's ministry died because he yielded to temptation.
many a sound Christian's testimony died because they yielded to temptation. It says there this morning, there hath no temptation taken you. That's a strong word, taken you. Do you know what that means? There's been no temptation this morning that has seized your mind. It's powerful how the devil can take an emotion and seize your mind with that emotion. It's powerful how there can be an urge within the human heart upon which this morning that the devil can seize your mind with it. And I wonder this morning, is there someone here, listen, this is the Lord's message. It's not my message. It's the Lord's message. And our brother prayed like this in the prayer meeting this morning. And listen, the big problem with all of us this morning is they think that nobody can be tempted the way like anybody else can be tempted. But we can. And I wonder this morning, is God pointing down on some brother in this meeting or some sister this morning in this meeting? And in recent days, you're being tempted to do something that's not right. Wonders of someone here this morning, and you're faced with something that may draw you into temptation to do wrong and to sin. Doesn't matter how spiritual you are, you can still be tempted. Maybe this morning there's someone in this meeting and you're wrestling and you're fighting with some temptation that the person sitting next to you doesn't know anything about. The common truth in this verse concerning temptation. Look at the comforting truth in this verse concerning temptation. Take a look at it. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. You know another thing we fail to realize, and I'm using the word we because I'm including myself. See, when I'm tempted, do you know what I fail to realize? I fail to realize that God is on my side during those moments. God is faithful this morning. God this morning has never once promised us to prevent us from temptations, but He does promise to limit their intensities. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Why? Because He knows, He understands the paths, the powers, the pressures of temptation. Child of God, listen this morning. Listen to me. Hebrews 2.18 tells us, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. You and I do not have a high priest this morning who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all ways tempted as we are, but yet without sin. Listen this morning. The Lord Jesus himself knows every strangling power of temptation. And he knows and he understands the powers of temptation. And you'll always find the devil come sneaking when you're at your weakest point. Wonders there's somebody here this morning, and, and life's difficult. 
you're, you're struggling in some way, maybe in the family. Maybe in the business. Or in some other way, you're struggling. And this morning, you're fighting. And you're facing some temptation that seems to provide an easy way out. This is what the Lord wants to tell you, as he told me. There is no reason, no matter how difficult, there is no reason as to matter how powerful to yield to any type of temptation. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above all that ye are able. Too many have at the time it seemed harmless. But from then to now they've lived a lifetime of regret. Whatever circumstance, child of God, temptation you face, listen this morning. God knows and God understands what you're dealing with. And he's well able to meet the need. And listen, this morning, child of God, he wants to give you the victory in the struggles of your life by his grace. By his grace, he is able to uphold you through trying times. You know, temptations divide Christians into two classes. Temptations divide believers into two classes. There's those who fail and go under. There's those who overcome and are strengthened. There are those who see temptations as stumbling blocks. There are others who see temptations as stepping stones. There's those who see temptations as hindrances, but there are those who see temptations as helps. Where would temptation put you this morning? The comforting truth in this verse. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Do you see the common truth in this verse concerning temptation? Do you see the comforting truth in this verse concerning temptation? But look at the crucial truth in this text concerning temptation, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. As the Lord has already reminded us this morning, listen, there is no excuse for me and there's no excuse for you to yield to temptation. Do you see this excuse we come out with? Oh, the devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do it at all. You chose to do it. And here's the crucial point this morning. Listen, when you're tempted, 
God provides the means for you and I to resist it. When David chose five smooth stones out of the brook to go and face Goliath, he knew that in his shepherd's bag, he knew he had the appropriate equipment to slay the giant that lay across his path. Five smooth stones and a sling was what he knew was appropriate to slay the giant. This is what God has given you and me to slay every giant of temptation that comes across our path. What do we read? In Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I may not sin against thee. Three times when the devil came to the Lord Jesus in the wilderness, three times the Lord Jesus defeated him by quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. Do you know this morning why so many of God's people today fall, succumb to temptation? Their lack of knowledge of God's Word. We have in God's Word this morning what it takes to overcome temptation, not for temptation to overcome us. And this is why it's so important this morning that these wee children whose minds are like sponges will need to get the Bible into their minds. In the mid-70s, when the troubles were at their highest, highest, young Christian lad who passed every exam in Sunday school, fell into the wrong company at school. Got sucked into paramilitaries. And before long, he was sent out with a nine millimeter Walther pistol. to make his first kill. He was bursting to get at it to do his part for Ulster. And I was only a young Christian when I heard, I think this was the first testimony I ever heard. He walked down the street and he was given his target and he was told about his target when he would leave the house and walk down and he was told how to do it. He was to walk down after him and put two in the back of his head. Couldn't wait to do it. And as he watched the house, he saw the man coming out and a child with him. He got out of the car, had the revolver in the coat pocket. And as he was walking down behind this man, he saw the wee boy putting his arm around his daddy. And there was a wee verse he learned in Sunday school. In Sunday school. And do you know what the wee verse was? Genesis 39 and 9. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He kept the revolver in his pocket and he ran as far away as he could from the scene until he ran home again and told his parents everything. His parents marched him round to where 
the leaders of this company was and told them that their son wants nothing more to do with it. And the young lad told his leaders, I was brought up a Christian and I was a Christian. And he says, now I've returned back to Christ and I want nothing more to do with this. And the commander says, we're glad to hear it. They stay away. Listen, child of God. No matter how difficult of a temptation we may face, you remember there's no excuse in yielding to it because God provides the means of escape. And listen, in every one of us, but for the grace of God, we're capable of doing anything. There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. And I trust that this message is the mean to stop somebody this morning from falling into sin. And as I said at the start, child of God, so I'll finish. It's wrong to judge any brother or any sister who has fallen into sin. For let him not think if he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. And may God's message be a warning to us all. There's nobody exempt from temptation. May God bless it to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn.